tell me when. Just let me know. Guys, if you're unaware, Jenna Marbles did that the last time shit hit the ceiling on this platform, and I'm going to turn that into tradition now. By the way, my makeup to wow. Like, honestly. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, if this was a makeup tutorial, you know I would have fucked shit up. Delusion. Good thing this video isn't about the makeup because ho oh, oh. ho. Anyways, hi friends, my name is. What's my name? I'm getting really creative with these names. Freddy Fazbear today because. Turns out, Chuck E. Cheese is bankrupt. If you follow my Twitter, you know that I'm not afraid to be vocal about um, everything that can be considered a bad thing. And I think two weeks ago, I tweeted something like, my dad and I just got in a three hour argument about Black Lives Matter. And then I tweeted, I managed to convince him that Black Lives Matter after we argued. And I asked you guys, would you want a video about that debate? A lot of you guys said yes. And I'm just hoping that this video isn't a waste. Hopefully this will help one person when they're debating their friend, family, person on the internet. Actually, don't bother with the internet part. By the way, my nails are purple and they match. They do. <laughs> Love yourself more. It does wonders to your ego. So basically, I'm going to be reading off a transcript of my whole debate. And before I start, just some disclaimers. If you want to just educate yourself about literally a bunch of problems in the world because Earth sucks. They'll be in the description. Also, there's gonna be some other resources where you can donate, sign petitions. If you can't donate, if you literally have no money, there are videos you can watch where the AdSense goes to that. And try to add links in the comments if you want. Like, as always, it, spread information. Also, I am no stranger to debating with my dad because I had a debate with him for four years straight on accepting <laughs> me being gay. I use straight and gay in the same sentence. That doesn't happen often. And that started when I was 13. So I've learned a little bit on how to talk to my dad. He's also from China. He's an immigrant. So there's a little bit of context for you. Also, this is not going to work for your parent 100%. It's not going to work for your friend 100%. Okay. Every situation is unique because everyone comes from different places and different beliefs. And that's the most important thing to learn when debating, in my opinion. And I'm not trying to be like, I know everything about Black Lives Matter. That that, not it. Don't twist my words. I'm just trying to share with you an experience that I had. That's all. Take this as a story time or a learning thing. So this is all in my notes. Unfortunately, I didn't record myself talking. I don't know why that didn't come to my mind. This whole debate started when I was asking him, can I go back to New York in the fall semester? And he was like, I don't know. You have to be careful. Careful about what? COVID? You think I'm going to die still? No, you need to be careful about the protests. And I was like, wait, 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 what? What about the protests do I have to be careful about? He's like, the riots. And I said, I don't think that I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be fine, guys. I'm gonna say he said a lot, by the way. My dad said, wait, do you like the protests? Do you like the riots? You know what? Maybe I should go back and forth like this. This is when I'm talking. This is when my dad's talking. I'm gonna sweat a lot doing this, by the way. Um, yeah, I support the protests and the riots. Why do, do you not? No, listen, I support the protests. I don't support the riots. And it was at this point where I was like, okay, here we go. Let's, let's do this. I'll do it again with you, dad. Would you care to explain to me why you don't support the riots, but you support the protests? By the way, the stuff I'm gonna say is my opinion. Let me have it. I'm just very anti-violence. I don't believe violence is the answer for this or almost anything. Okay, I see where you're coming from. This is good. I can work with this. And here are some things that I had to teach myself when debating because I used to not do this. The first step is to know where the person you're arguing with is coming from in their mind, even if it's wrong. So my dad doesn't really, isn't fond of black people. Why? Because in China, there's a lot of anti-blackness. There's not a lot of black people in China. It's mainly Asian people, if you didn't notice. And typically as humans, we stay away from or we don't like things that we don't know or understand. So when my dad immigrated here, that was his first time even seeing black people and white people. Like it wasn't something common in his area. I'm not trying to excuse him here, trust me. I'm just trying to tell you that you have to understand that's the part you have to work with. And I've also known that he wasn't really fond of black people because of the way he talks about them. Like in middle school, he used to say this word that I can tell was not a good word. I just didn't feel like debating my dad in middle school. You know, I was like, I'll wait until the, t the time comes. And if you don't bother trying to think about where they come from, you're not gonna find a middle ground. Cause before when I debated him about me being gay, I was always like, I'm right, you're wrong, shut up, let me talk, all this. I wouldn't even let him speak. I wouldn't care to listen to him. And it's hard to do, trust me, I hate having to do it, but you have to listen to them and their words, even if it's 
really bad words. And this gets worse. Remember, this was three hours long. Because we're not black and we're not actively participating in these protests or riots right now, you don't really get to speak for them and have an opinion and neither can I. Well, why are they rioting then? That's just gonna paint them in a bad light. No racist is gonna look at them on the news and say, I'm gonna support black people now, even when they're raiding stores. It's not just black people writing stores. The news outlets are very biased sometimes and, well not sometimes, they show what they want to show. There's a lot of different people rioting. Rioters are different from protesters. Looters are different from rioters are different from protesters. Kimberly Latrice Jones, she put it best. I'm gonna let you watch that video. I'm not gonna speak, I'm not gonna take her words, but I really suggest you watch her video. She explains it better than I ever could. So at this point, it was a bunch of back and forth of, you don't get to talk about these riots that, well, I don't like the violence. But how does it affect you? Are you directly being affected by this? No, but I just used to support Black Lives Matter and now I don't. So what do you support now? All lives matter. Yes, I know. Electric chair. I know, maybe you won't like that word. I didn't like it. <laughs> I felt some way when he said it and I was like, okay, dad. You can't say that. You have to understand Black Lives Matter doesn't mean your life doesn't. It means Black Lives Matter just as much as others. He didn't get that at first. I think a lot of people don't get that at first and they still won't. Just dislike the video while you can. You can go ahead. At this point, I, th I think we've been debating about 30 minutes and it was still about the rights. And then I realized that this isn't just about the rights. This is rooted in him because of where he came from. Dad, do you understand why they're even protesting and rioting in the first place? Yes, yes, I know the history of America. I don't think you do. Cause even I don't. And I had to go through the education system in America and it's faulty. So I doubt that you do. Also at this point, I found out he had a Twitter. Very proud of him for getting a Twitter of all things. And then I saw that he's only following traditional news channels like Fox News and then Trump. Mind you, he doesn't like Trump anymore, but he just wants to know what the guy thinks. Dad, you realize that your Twitter is not showing you the reality of what these protests and rights are because you're not looking at local people, you know, people who aren't on a platform and they're just showing a video for the sake of it. If you don't know what I mean, I'm talking about the ones where people are actively at the protest and are just filming that part and they happen to go viral. Not what Fox tweets out, not what Trump tweets out. Don't, don't look at that politician right now. That doesn't matter. The point is, I don't understand why we still have to fight for this. Well, let me tell you a little bit about what happened 400 years ago in America. I'm gonna tell you, I'm not fully educated yet because I still have a lot to learn because America's education isn't the best when you live in the South. The TLDR that I told them is the history of America is stealing because all we did was take black people from Africa to here, make them work in the North and the South. We were so selfish that we had a civil war. The states are so selfish still that we have our own state laws, even though we're called the United States. And even after the Civil Rights Act, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, these movements and activists, there's still not equal opportunity for black people. It doesn't click right away. You know, it, it, there's no way it would because think about this. What would you do if I told you you should be homophobic? Like, would you honestly switch that fast? And to me, that inability to switch is what happens in a person's mind when they're racist. Like, it's just how they are. And to switch that instantly is hard. So you have to like constantly combat at them and just remind them about the other viewpoint that you believe is right, but not bash them over the head because you have to get them to listen to you, not refuse to listen to you. It's tiring, I know, but it's, important to talk to your family about this. And th there's some gaps in my notes, but at some point my dad said black people were lazy. Yeah, I know that's how you feel, but just can we talk about it? Why do you feel that way? Well, they could have stayed in Africa. They didn't have to come here. And I think I don't think he gets the fact that they didn't have a choice. They were forced to come here. They could have tried to blank 400 years ago. They could have tried to escape. And then I had to just remind him, black people, if anything, are the opposite of lazy. They are proactively trying to get their equal freedom and rights, even back then. Like even back then, there were people who tried to escape their slave owners. There were people who fought for slavery to be abolished. You had Martin Luther King, you had Rosa Parks, you had people actively trying, but what happens in the end? You either got assassinated, sent to jail, and just constantly prevented from continuing your movement and your having your voice. Like even what happened at Stonewall, like they were still arrested after, they didn't want, no one wanted them to continue the movement. So maybe that's why you think they're lazy because you don't bother seeing that they've tried 
and are still trying and nothing is working. So I just had to tell him, let's watch a documentary. Let's watch the 13th on Netflix. Can, can you do that for me? Cause I think in the first 30 minutes, you learn enough to be able to like understand what the whole rest of the documentary is gonna be about. This was at midnight at this point. So I didn't want him to watch the whole documentary cause he would have fallen asleep. And I said, will you go into this with an open mind? Will you allow them to speak and not trying to rebuttal every second? Cause I had a feeling that he would try to combat at this documentary since it does show mainly black people speaking. This is foreshadowing, by the way. Okay, fine. Let's watch the documentary. Yes, I'll listen. Of course I'll listen. I, I always want to see both sides before I form my opinion. He said that, I was like, bullshit, but I won't call you out yet. We watch it. In 10 minutes, he's like, I don't think this is the right, no. There's only black people on the screen. <laughs> yes, you're right. Cause who else is gonna talk about, you think Asian people are gonna talk about this? You think white people are gonna talk about dad, really? Well, I just don't like it because of course there's gonna be a bias when black people are speaking on behalf of black people. And I feel like if I saw it from someone like you, Frederick, I would believe it more. Maybe you might disagree with me on the analogy, but I, I worked on him. So if you watch a documentary about the Holocaust from the perspective of a Jewish person, who survived the camps and a Nazi, which one would you believe, dad? Oh, you can't compare the two. I think I can, because I think you're trying to defend the other side instead of the person who was marginalized and discriminated against. Yeah, I'd probably listen to the Jewish person. Yes, you should, which is why you need to listen to these people speaking on the screen, because there is no Asian who would talk about this, dad. I mean, you know what I mean. Also, he didn't know that the protesters were being tear gassed. He thought that the protesters started the riots and that's why he didn't support the movement because his Twitter feed never showed the parts of them being gassed. What news channel would show that? Tell me one. No, I don't believe they're being tear gassed. I refuse to believe that. So I showed him a clip. Then I showed him another, because I had these saved on my phone. I showed him like five different clips of them being gassed. F another five different clips of people saying don't shoot, then the rubber bullets start shooting. Ones of people at Philly, cause we live near that, of like my friends just like doing this, you know, laying down, saying don't shoot and it starts peaceful and then the police start to make it violent. You know how he said violence is never the answer? I, I used it against him because sometimes you need to use people's words against them. That helps them click. So I said, you told me violence is never the answer. The police are being violent, dad. Are you gonna tell me this is false? I'm a bad actor. Oh my God. Yeah, this isn't right. I didn't know this was happening. So finally, he starts to understand after, after that of all things, dad, this is why the riots happened in the first place because you keep telling me that violence isn't the answer and that it shouldn't, but there's no other option because they've tried protesting. They've tried speaking out about it. They tried being active back then. They tried to fight for their freedom. They've tried for so many years and nothing still works. And even after being peaceful, it didn't work. So the next step is just to, there's no other step and they're angry. And I told my dad like, how do you think the protests end? Do you think at some point at 6 p.m. every protester is like, we've done this for two hours, let's go home. No, they usually end because someone ends it for them. He didn't think about that part. So then he understood. And then I told him like, do you know that like basically black people had to build this country. And even when they were given freedom, they tried to build their own communities and those were taken down as Kimberly Jones said in Tulsa and in Rosewood. Th then he said like, oh, this is so similar to what's happening in China and Hong Kong. And he said that around 10 times and I'm still not educated about that, but I, I think he supports the protest there. So I just didn't understand why he didn't support him here. Then I realized it was because he doesn't like black people that much. Cause then he decided to say this when we talked about the crime rate, cause he was saying like, well, black people typically have a higher crime rate. And I said, why do you think that? Do you know where it comes from? Which the 13th did inform. This was prior to watching it, I just remembered. He said, what would you do if a black person came here right now at midnight and a white per or a white person came here at midnight and knocked on our door. I knew what he was trying to get me to say. And I just told him, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like anyone at my door at this time. I would, no one should be here at this time because we're fighting about nothing at 1 a.m. dad. And he said, well, I would be more scared if it was a black person. I was like, yeah, well, why do you think that? And I just had to get, like, I just had to tell him like he, 
doesn't like black people as much as Asian people and white people because he wasn't surrounded by them and he's just wired to instantly not like them or think of the stereotypes and profile them which is what happens the whole the, that's why this shit isn't right because you keep people keep profiling I'm getting a little angsty like he told me well, why do you think like George Floyd happened? Because they profiled him. I was like, well, that's why it's a problem. Because you profile him. You can't do that, Dad. That they do that to us too. Like, why don't you get it? And he keeps saying like, but I don't think America's this bad. I don't. I didn't know the police were this bad. I I haven't seen racism that much. I I don't. I wasn't, I don't see it. He doesn't see it apparently. So I said, Dad, do you know what happened to me in South Carolina? Like, do you know my childhood and my middle school and high school? No. But did you know that South Carolina has a lot of black people there? Like 27%. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder why, dad, in Charleston. Did you know that in eighth grade, I was taught that the Civil War wasn't really about slavery. It was more about separation of state. That's what my teacher told me. Was he white? Yeah, she was white. You think they would let a black person talk about this history? I don't remember one black teacher in South Carolina that I had. Do you think that my school would have let a black person teach History, US history, Charleston history, dad. No, they wouldn't. Well, did you experience racism? Uh, do you know where that midget Asian came from, dad? If you don't know, that used to be my username. No, I didn't know. Well, since third grade, people called me that because I was short and I was the shortest person in the school and I was one of the only Asians there. And they would mock me. They would still do this. They would do this. They would do this. I got makeup on, so I'm not gonna do it. They would slant their eyes. They would say Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Philip, whatever shit. They would stereotype it. They would be like, oh my God, Asians are so smart. Which is like, don't do, don't do that. Oh my God. That's a whole nother topic. But yeah, I experienced it since elementary school, dad. You never knew. Cause you never listened to me. <laughs> well, what about in high school? Like how many black people were in your grade? I remember three in my grade out of a hundred people. And I always thought that was weird in high school cause I couldn't, I only saw three. Really, there were only three. But the population is, yeah, what, well, yeah, what, what you said dad, the population is 27% black. So why are the three people in this school dad? <laughs> so that was another case of me taking his own facts and using it against him. And then I told him, dad, how, you really think there's no racism? Do you have any black friends? You didn't say any. Do you have, any black co-workers when you were in Charleston? I had some. Name them. He got like four workers and there were people, a lot of people at his firm. So dad, when you say you don't see racism, have you ever thought about the fact that maybe it's because you are racist and you think everyone's actions are just okay? Did I lie? Did I lie? You know, my co-workers back in South Carolina did talk about black people in a negative tone. I know, cause I was there when you took me to work one day. And at this point, he just didn't want to talk anymore because I think he got like when I told him that he was racist I think that was like him. Oh Shoot, <laughs> that's probably what he thought. So we ended the documentary. He went back to sleep and I was like, did you learn something today? And he was just like, mm. he didn't want to acknowledge that he was wrong or something. You know how dads are Uh, Maybe you don't I don't know and then after that I told him like follow me on Twitter I'm going to DM you links every day about what I see on my feed versus you and I'm going to show you things that I think could educate you more So I've been DMing him. I think he I ask him. Are you reading them? And he is when he went to sleep I also followed some people that I think he should follow on Twitter So I follow people like AOC New York Times just accounts that help me learn to when I'm looking at stuff and sure maybe if you're against Black Lives Matter and you are still watching why? You're gonna say, well, that, yeah, that's just you showing your bias. Yeah, I, that is my bias for only pushing the New York Times and those types of people and articles. But I believe I'm on the right side of history for supporting this. So th of course I'm going to show my bias right now. Wh why else do you think I'm making the video, dude? And yeah, that's, that's it. Um, we haven't talked about it since, but I do want you guys to know to like not attack my dad because he was embarrassed when he saw me, when he read my tweet after I followed him. He said like, why would you tweet this? I was like, do you think I just don't tweet anything when we argue? Even back then, like I've talked about this on my channel many times. He's just like, don't, that's embarrassing to me about my beliefs. And I was like, yeah, good. You should be embarrassed about your beliefs. Change them. And I am glad he's changed them, even about being gay and like even this stuff. So just know that I'm very proud of him. I'm not trying to shame him. I don't, guys don't shame him. I think that everyone has the ability to change. It just depends on if they can find someone who can 
speak to them and get them to understand without causing chaos and arguments. Also change takes time and know that like I've, it took me four years for the gay thing. It took me three hours for this one. So it, it will take you a long time to do this with your family if you choose to. But the most important thing is don't give up. Constantly do it. Try to not blow up is the best thing I can tell you. If you can keep your inside voices, it's easier. That's all I have. Hopefully this helps someone. As always, black lives still matter. Don't make it a trend. I'm not gonna shut up. So if you don't like it, leave and educate yourself. And that's all I have. If you enjoyed this video, give a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe for more videos every week, turn on my notifications so you don't miss them. And as always, I love you guys. Everything is less than three. I am ready to use it. I'm, I, will, I will be here for you, okay? <laughs> Bye.